After I would be like him in a shaitan regime, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Tari Katan or Asafa, or Khairo P. Jamia, or Dar Shahra Al Athad asked that our way is Safa to come together under the nazar of the Shaykh, blessing as in the gathering, and in Shahrat, in fame or in what you do for people, not what you do for Allah, is a pestilence which destroys your good deeds. And also, to recite that ayat, that Hashem said once, if you just recite it, it's as if you did it. So I ask him to be with those they heard and they obeyed. The first station of fighting the nafs, the ego, is to do what you're told. It's very difficult to follow the instructions of someone. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until we could be raised to the level of mushahida, to be like prophets and awliya, uh, when we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's our imagination, simply. Sheikh Mohidin ibn al-Arabi said, everyone is following the gods of their beliefs. And it's not necessarily the true thing, the true reality. Until we reach that reality, our minds are putting together, each one of us is reading and listening and putting together a picture of what it is Allah and what's obedience to Allah and Prophet Sallallahu At the beginning, it needs a guide, a shaykh, to say like this or like that, because the hardest thing to follow the, is to follow the uh, advice or orders of another person. So difficult. It's so difficult. Any married person, husband and wife, love each other, it's difficult to follow what the other one wants to do. Mostly we just, we follow ourselves. And difficult to uh, wrestle with the ego when we mostly are following our ego's commands 24 hours. Therefore, a guide is necessary. And to do what he says is necessary up to the point where we can be uh, pulled upwards. One person, a friend of mine, years ago, he asked Sheikh Nazim, Allah bless him, what's the uh, function of the Sheikh? Is translation needed for any of this, Hussein, or is it okay in English? No, I think everyone speaks English. Okay. If uh, anyone doesn't understand, signal, and then we we'll give translation, inshallah. He asked Sheikh Nazim, Ya Sayyidi, oh my Sheikh, what's your job? What's the function of the Sheikh? And he gave a little story about I've said this before but it's good to remember it to repeat it again and again benefits the believer in the old days and in some countries without uh, technology they grow the sugar cane in villages and the men cut down the sugar cane with machetes and 
bring it to a central location and they put it into a wooden uh, tub, like a canoe, like a boat. And then they sit around that canoe and they chant to make the work lighter. And they beat the sugar cane into a uh, pulp so they can easily uh, boil it down into sugar. The Sheikh said there's one old man in that village. He's tired, he's old. He can't anymore uh, cut the sugar cane or beat the sugar cane with hammer with mallets. So his job is to sit in the front of the canoe, the boat, and while the workers are chanting, he goes, eh, 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 and beat the sugar cane. The Sheikh's job to encourage you. The work you have to do yourself, but his job to encourage you, to encourage all of us, and we have to listen what he says. Otherwise, only our ego is going to be directing us. Even in Islam, there's a whole surah title, surah, surah consultation. Islam orders us to consult with our important people that when we want to do something, in case we think we have a good idea, might not be a good idea. You say to your brother or your sister, or I'm thinking to do such and such. He says, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. And maybe all your friends would say, it's not such a good idea. But my ego is saying it's such a good idea. Is that uh, consultation is needed? I asked Molana Sheikh something one time. I wanted to do something, a project in Green Lanes. We were taking the water from a pipe from the kitchen sink, and I wanted permission to run another pipe underneath out to the garden. People could make voodoo there and not bother the kitchen sink. I say, is it a good idea, Ya Sayyidi? He says, it's a very good idea. But we have to check if it's a perfect idea. And perfect idea needs the Sheikh's signature because they know what we don't know. They know what we don't know. You have to think your sheikh knows at least 50 times more than you do before you do something. At least to ask your trusted people, at least to ask your sikhara through your heart if you can't find anyone to ask. Think on it. Don't be hasty. Don't rush to do something and don't rush to say something. You might regret it later. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Sayyidina wa nina wa As an exercise to keep the ego under reins, under, in check. And we're asking to follow our faith from beginning level to go higher. To reach areas yet we didn't reach it. Human beings have been honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakat Karamna Bani Adam. We honored the children of Adam and Eve. And he honored us with certain abilities that's not given to other creatures. Even angels. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Sayyidina Adam, he said, this is my deputy, make sajda to him. And the angels say, what to be? How we're going to make sajda to people who are going to make fitna and shed blood? And Allah said, I know what you don't know. 
and he taught Adam from the higher knowledge and said to him, say to the angels, tell them their names, says the Holy Quran. It means to show something from the precious favors that Allah gave to human beings that they never thought of. And Adam showered them with their names, their realities, showing them what they never thought of. And the angels were stunned, they say. Subhanaka, la ilmu lana illa ma alamtana, innaka anta alimun haki. Glory to you, O oh our Lord. We only, we didn't realize it before, we only knew what you made us to know. We thought our knowledge covered everything, encompassed everything. Now we see only it was what you put in us, and there's much more. Glory to you. Then they made fell into Sishta, in front of Satan Adam. So human beings, we're all the children of Adam and Eve. We have something, favors from Allah that nothing else has in creation. And it's our uh, duty or our high, let's say our highest calling as human beings to learn about those heavenly gifts that Allah gave us to run after it. I was looking Imam Ghazali, uh, Mishkat al-Anwar. He said, you have to hunt it like a hunter hunts a prey to the ends of the world. The Prophet said, seek knowledge even up to China. This is what he meant. Seek knowledge of the hidden capabilities that Allah gave us that we didn't know about it before. We think everything is in the realm of our thinking, our mind and our imagination. But there's something beyond that. Prophets, especially the seal of prophets, and some only has that capability to look into heavenly realms, to look to the uh, Lahu Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. For us, it's only a word. We don't know what it is. To look to higher uh, levels. They say, Wulk, or Malakut, or Jabarut, or Lahut, or Hahut. They're just words in Sufi books for us. But we have the capability to reach it. But we're not trying to get up. Always our uh, senses are pulling us back down. Imam Ghazali said, our senses are dragging us back to the world of sensation, to the world of mind. And we're not trying to go up, to seek the ways to get up to the higher world, to open those other uh, qualities. Allah say, it's not the eyes in your face that are blind, it's the eyes in your heart. It's not the ears in your head that are deaf, it's the ears in your heart. We're not trying to open our heart's eyes and our heart's ears. This is important for us. We need to give some time in addition to our Praying and fasting and sakat and sadaka and hajj and dhikr. We need to give some time for meditation or marakaba. 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 Watch it. Watch it. To sit. Say the Najbuddin Kubra. Allah bless him. A huge uh, wali. He said, Look after or watch your breath, your breathing. Holy Quran says, On the fakta 
Fihimiruhi. We blew into Adam from our ruh, from Allah, from His divinely spirit, blew into us. He blew our breath into us. Our, his spirit comes into us through the breath. In one ayat, it's the uh, attributive pronoun. We blew from our ruh into him. And we have to look and see what's coming through our breathing. He said, we repeat it as we said before, Allah, the name Allah in Arabic, Aleph, Lam, Lam, Ha. Aleph, Lam is the definite article, specifies something. The picture, the wall, the curtain, the chair, the speaker. Lam makes it more strong. And to focus attention, it's important, the, verily the. And what comes after that? What? The, the most important pointing out, the, the what? Ha. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the ha. Allah. Allah. And it comes without our thinking it in every breath. He said, be heedful when you're breathing, when you're saying, ha, ah, it's not an ordinary sound you make. And one of the, I'm reminding myself too, one of the principles of Nakshabandi Tarika, to be aware of your breath. To be for some time to sit and pay attention to your breath. Re oh, oh. Huh. Watch your breath. Leave your thoughts to go where they're going to go. Leave your senses to go where they're going to go, asking the Divine Spirit to come and to open our higher possibilities. I can't say more than that. This Grand Sheikh didn't speak about something unless he reached it. We're beginners. We're saying only at the beginning. I'm also a beginner. Even when I became old, how many people became old and never reached their real humanity? Sheikh Hashem used to tell a story for one of the Marids of Sayyidina Khalid Baghdadi, Allah bless him. He was in Sham, Damascus, at the time of the plague, Black Death. They used to recite. Ali Ashtiani looked up in some old Farsi books for Khalid in Akshibandi Shiuk. They say Mulana Khalid used to, and his Marines used to recite after every fard, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad, riyadha nikuli da'in wa dawa'in wa barak wa salim alayhi wa alayhim kathira. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad. They used to recite that as a, a, a defense, making the vampire movies, they're making cross against the vampire. It's a defense against that plague, against that virus. Because there's a, they like to make everything physical. There's another element to this, what's going on now, affecting the whole world. A spiritual element, we're asking the protection of 
Prophet only against the evil. So one of the marids of Mulana Khalid, he came to his sheikh one morning and the sheikh said to him, oh my son, I have a job for you today. I want you to go to the cemetery and take wisdom from there. He said, we heard you, we hear and we obey. As you say, Ya Sayyidi. And he went, Salaamu Alaikum, and he went to the cemetery. The cemetery had a high wall around it in that place. When he came to the gates of that cemetery, he found one strange person sitting up on the wall. And the person said to him, why you came here? He said, I'm on an important job for my sheikh, leave me alone. He said, I'm going to come with you. From the beginning, this person was bothering the Murray. Something about his manner was irritating. Murray said, I have to be patient. My sheikh says to be patient, not to get angry. He was controlling himself not to get angry because the person was behaving in the most irritating way. There was something about him irritating. And that person followed that person through the cemetery. They came to a grave, and you know, on the gravestone in some countries, it's written the birth date and the death date of the person buried in that grave. And it showed that that person was for instance, 80 years of age when he passed away. And the first, and the Murid was looking at it and the fellow who was accompanying him said, I, why, 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 why? They say, why, 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 why? Oh, 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 oh. He passed away so young. He was only three years of age. Poor person, his parents must be crying for him. And the, he looked at him and said, what are you talking about? He was 80 years old. Three, leave me alone. <laughs> he went to the next grave. He was a famous uh, alam and hafiz. Passed away 90 years of age. Why, 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 why? Only two years old. How his mother is crying for him. Passed away so young. What you're saying, he was 90 years old. He could hardly move. He was an old man. No, two years. Leave me alone. And like that, every grave they went to, there was no one in that cemetery more than five years old. So all of them were in their 70s, 80s, 90s. The prophet said, mostly my nation passed away in 60s and 70s. Nowadays, with technology, we have extra time. May Allah make, it to, make us to use it uh, well. He, that person pestered that guy all the way up to the gates of the cemetery. said, leave me. Leave me. I don't want to hear anything more from you. And I'm going back to my sheikh. And he, he started back for his sheikh's darga. When he got there, he found that guy from the cemetery sitting with his sheikh. The crazy one from the cemetery. And they were talking about him. The crazy guy was saying, I don't know how you're patient with such a Marine. So stupid. This guy is a real ahmak, a real idiot. Who? And Mulan Khalid said, Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing I can do. It's my fate. I have to carry this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. He's an idiot. And there was calling as if he's not standing there, they're saying how bad he is. And he's controlled, the Marine is controlling himself. I can't get angry, this must be a test. He was keeping himself, keeping him, keeping himself, and they're showering him with, uh, not curses, uh, putting him down, down, down. Dissing him, uh, dissing him. Disrespecting, you disrespected me. Baizid Bistami said, I always respected everyone. I never expect 
expected anyone to respect me back, but no one has that good manner anymore. They don't even teach it. They say, you disrespected me. Oh, we're not going to disrespect you. You're an idiot, but never mind. So they were showering that guy, and he was the marid, and he was uh, keeping himself. When the sheikh looked to his heart that he was, that the marid was steady, not getting angry, he said, okay, it was a test. That this person here is Sayyidina Khidr, and he came to the cemetery to teach you a lesson. Always Khidr comes with something to make you angry. As he came to Sayyidina Musa with something to make him upset. And he was teaching you that although these people became old in physical years, they didn't reach their real possibility as human beings till near the end of their life. Therefore, 80 years old really was five years, three years old, two years old, five years old. They never reached it. So take a lesson. Intend and try to be like that hunter, Imam Ghazali, Kodosalawas, was speaking about, to chase that quarry, to chase your real possibilities, like the hunter chases the prey up to the end of the world. Learn the means for it and try to reach it. Begin to watch your breath. Spend some time every day to sit. Feel divine breath coming in, coming out. Allah, oh. That ha is divine name coming to your nostril, coming to your heart. To your let I may Allah grant for us an opening. This is the holy month of Dukada, the month of Khalwa, the month of seclusion. Even though lockdown is finishing, try to make your ego locked down a little bit each day. Sit with the intention of reaching the real reality that Allah created you. So go beyond your senses and your mind and your imaginations to the higher perception that prophets and awliya were reaching. You are, I am not. These are all to trigger idea or something to our imagination and then to go beyond, to go beyond to the level of, of witnessing. Try to, try to give some time for that exercise during this holy month. I'm trying also, inshallah, may Allah grant us by the blessings of Prophet Sallallahu and Awliya to come up, even a little bit to come up through this holy month. We're intending to reach. We have time for zikr? No. Okay. I will be the Imam Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ha before we go on I saw you, you put on the internet the other day Nana Sheikh Nazim in an old sahaba was saying pay heed to what you're chasing after in this life what's the prey you're chasing after as Imam Ghazali said that's why it's stuck in my mind. We spend all our lives chasing after this and that, this and that, and all of it coming to be nothing in the end. Run after the important one, the important prey, to reach your real possibility as Allah's Khalifa. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. 